Hi everyone and welcome to my place. Today I want to share what I'm going to call a composition study. And by that I mean getting a whole heap of forms. Look at all these along here. Love these leaves. I've got one beautiful ornamental uh, pineapple. I've got an obsidian orchid here. So, and all of these lovely, lovely, lovely different forms. I've got ones, I've got three, I've got one great big fat kale. I love these ornamental kales, they are so nice. Little tip if you're working with them and you're putting them with other flowers, this will very soon stink up the water and it's best to be change your best to be changing the water every day because it doesn't take long for the whole place to smell like a stinking cabbage. So all of these lovely little forms here and I just thought that today would be a really great, a good um, moment because I've, we've got a new market here in Auckland and it's just such the best place. In fact, it's like going to, to heaven but they've got all these lovely new flowers and stuff that I haven't had access to for such a long time. So when it comes to putting all these together, I like to say that it's, it's like doing a jigsaw working with flowers and like any jigsaw you've got all your bits in front of you and you think to yourself oh my goodness where will I start well jigsaws or floral jigsaws are so much better to get into because the first thing you have to do because you always have to have a start is to find yourself a container now I don't often use um, gold containers because there's not much that I can find that will go with it but when I start to look into the back of these lovely proteas I can see that there's like a little bit of gold in there so when you look into that and then look into the container I can see that bit of touch of gold and also when I look into this pineapple there's little bits that little color there that reflects beautifully through with or transition through to that solid mass of the gold what I've done with this container is it's look this container must have been going around for about 20 years it is one of those wonderful urns that just lends and blends to just about anything I like to do with now what I've done with this is I've just I misted it with black paint and then I've just put a little bit of gold on it and then just got a little towel where is my towel oh man hmm I want to ask you about cats these cats of mine, I've got two, this is Ming, they contribute nothing to the running of this house yet they always want to be involved in whatever I'm doing almost like I'm being supervised. But anyway, getting back to this. So what I did was I just misted it with some gold paint and then just went around and just dabbed little bits of the gold paint off so that I had more of a rustic look and sort of making it a little bit more shabby chicish. Now you could fill this with all with foam or if you're stuck and you don't have much um, foam and a lot of people say to me, what if I don't have foam or I've only got a little bit of foam? I really love things like this buckets that can then be placed inside my container and I don't care about that handle that's sticking up because that just is, you're not going to see it anyway. The other thing that I do is I always take my foam lower about a good inch and a half down into the container. A lot of people bring them up above it but it takes a lot of filling to, or to hide the, the foam that if you can see it so it's much easier I look this is just how I like to do it I like to, I prefer it this way and if I can save a few bucks here and there on foam I think I'm saving the environment so I don't care okay I've got some aurelia I've got three aurelia leaves so what I'm going to do is I'm just pushing those down and I'll put one onto that side and a, sort of like an equal equal Ooh, ooh, ooh. I should have cut that a bit, but just sort of like an equal distance between each placement. And just by putting the leaves in, you can see that I've covered up that container in the inside there. So it sort of works quite well. And you know, I'm saving a few dollars by not having to use all that foam. And that little bucket, that little bucket um, lid sort of like poking up, but don't worry about that, I'll just push it down. Okay, so now the fun begins. I'm going to put in, I've got, the most that I've got is the calicarpia. So, and, I just want you to know that this Chinese beauty berry or calicarpia can be a right nuisance because all those little little purple dots, they fall off. So what I do is I use those first and get them out of the way. I'm going to put them into the center of my design because if they are going to fall, they can drop down into the arrangement. A few might fall onto the surface, my placement surface, but at least I know that they're all in and out of the way. And I'm just placing those straight, the whole, the all 10 stems I've just pushed straight into there. And as I knew it would happen, 
as chance would have it, they have all just fallen off, but at least they're contained within their design. The next thing I've got here are the three proteas, and what I'm going to do with those is, because they're the biggest, I'm just going to push those down into the design. So I've got one there, and pretty much placing them the same as you I've done with the leaves, but these are going between the leaves, and they're all cut round about the same length. So that can just go down into there. So there we have them, and they're sort of, I've had them, put them so that they're poking out, and whichever, whichever way they want to fall. The next thing I've got now is these, and I can't for the life of me remember what these are called, and I have done, put them down. I think that they are woody scepters, I think. I'm not sure, but I've never seen them before. And it's, re as I said, it's just such a treat for me after all of these years to have a new market that is providing me with a lovely supply of new materials to work with. Okay, so with these, I'm just gonna plant, poke a few up into the center here. And as I'm placing them, I'm just going to push them down so that they are at different lengths as if they were growing. So you've got one, two and three like little steps up. Now because I've done that on that side, I'm going to repeat that on this side, but taking that down ever so much lower, that one down there, and this, and don't forget to take all this foliage that's going to go into, that would be going into the foam. Take that off so you've got a nice clean stem to push into. So this has three on it, so I'm, by putting that into there, I've sort of, I've got a high over here, that come across to a nice sort of little grouping over there. So already my jigsaw, floral jigsaw is starting to come to, together and I'm filling in those bases. Now this, I'm just gonna cut that off there and that's a bit broken, but that foliage there, I'm just gonna cut that off there and cut that one there and I'm going to use that because I think that that foliage is really lovely and it complements in with that quite beautifully. So where, where there is foliage on a plant or a flower, try and use it if you can, that will last for ages. So I'm just gonna put that down and into there like so and then that little stuff there needs to be taken off. So, and then just push that down into there. So I've got this lovely, now that this is what I was talking about by the, a lesson or a study in composition, where you see all of your bits together. So you've got the lovely smooth line here of your aurelia coming up into these little bo bobbly brunia here, which I think is quite nice. And the other thing that's quite lovely is the black tips on the protea are sort of like in through the colorway over into these, the brunia here. And the other thing that's really lovely is that color there is also coming through into the purple of the calicarpia. I love that nature's so clever at painting. Now, the next thing I want to put into here is I've got this lovely obsidian orchid. So I'm just gonna push that down into there. And the beauty of these things is they last such a long time. Actually, I'll just take that out of there and I'm gonna cut that a little bit shorter. Taking that into there like that. And now look what's happening here with the color. The little black tips there are coming through and reflecting through in the same color way as what the orchid is. So clever. The, la the next thing I want to put into here is this little pineapple. I'm just going to cut that there and I'm going to leave that, use that as well because I quite like the, the texture that's on those little leaves. And I'm just going to put that around uh, and into there. That can just sit into there. And then with the pineapple, I'm just going to push that to sit. Whoops, hold on. No, I can't do that changing my mind. I'm just going to put that into there. Oh, look at that. That can just come up a wee bit there. And the great thing with those is they last such a long time. And the last beautiful insertion is going to be the kale, which I'm just going to put into there. And not only have we got this beautiful jigsaw composition of forms, we've also got these lovely muted colorways that are happening as well. And when you look into that little kale there, I think what's really, really beautiful is that it's like the lighter shade of the same family as the calicarpia or the purple. So you would not normally put all of these forms together, but I'm saying that as a study or something nice to just be able to visually enjoy to enhance the decor of your home might just be 
put together quite beautifully in a very simple design that didn't take very long. So I hope I've been of a help to those of you who need to know about how to use things you know, that are all different in texture and that I've helped you. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you another day. Thank you.